the uh, consequence of chronic transfusion therapy or even repeated transfusion is that iron overload develops. Humans have no way to excrete iron. And so uh, if you're receiving even random transfusions, your iron levels are going to go up. And if you're receiving transfusions every three weeks, they're going to go up very dramatically. Iron is very toxic. It causes liver failure. It can get into the pancreas and cause diabetes. It gets into the heart and can cause heart failure. The incidence of these, uh, of the diabetes and the endocrine failure and uh, cardiac failure is significantly lower in the patients with sickle cell disease than it is in uh, thalassemia, MDS, or other disorders of bone marrow failure, but it exists nonetheless. And it's very important to, to d make this diagnosis and to treat it effectively. The test that's usually used to screen iron overload is a measurement of ferritin. This is an uh, easy test to do, it's routinely available, but there's a lot of problems with this. Uh, ferritin goes up when iron, total body iron levels go up, but it also goes up in response to inflammation and other things. So in large population studies, there's about an 80% correlation between the uh, ferritin level and the total body iron. The best way to measure total body iron is to measure the liver iron concentration and the way that this is done uh, is by magnetic resonance imaging. All 1.5 Tesla uh, magnet strength MRI machines are capable of making the iron measurement but it requires modification of the software. The standard software on most of these machines is not um, programmed to detect the very high iron levels. And so you'll get the wrong answer if you don't have the proper uh, software. Nonetheless, this is a very accurate uh, uh, way to make these measurements. If you try to correlate the liver iron concentration with the ferritin in an individual patient, there's very wide variability. So a ferritin level in uh, one patient of 5,000 could be related to a liver iron level um, that's maybe five or 10, which is tenfold elevated. That same ferritin level could be seen in a patient with a liver iron of 1.5 or two, which is almost normal. So to f following the ferritin level serially is also problematic. Uh, we published a couple of years ago that about 25% of the time when the total body iron is going down, the ferritin is actually going up. So you need to, to, so screening with ferritin is reasonable. Um, looking at transferrin saturation is a reasonable thing to look at. If it's over 50%, that means that the toxic form of iron is circulating in the patient. Actually, the uh, form of iron that's in ferritin and the form of iron measured by MRI is, non, is the non-toxic form of iron. So you need to put all of these things together to make the decision uh, of uh, how to treat. And this is especially important uh, when you use chelation therapy and you try to normalize uh, the liver iron levels or the total body iron levels. There is some difference about what is an acceptable level. Um, most of the package inserts for the chelators say you should start chelating at a ferritin of 1,000. Uh, I can tell you that people have ferritins that are 100 or 200 and have total body iron levels that are three to five times the normal level. Many current publications say it's acceptable to uh, keep the liver iron in the range of three to seven. Um, at our program, we, we believe strongly that the liver iron level should be normalized and be kept less than 1.5. There is substantial data in the epidemiological literature about iron overload showing that patients in their uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s have a significant increased risk of secondary cancers, of endocrine failure, and other complications because regardless of your diagnosis, simply if you have an elevated transferrin saturation. 
and the amount of damage that occurs from iron uh, is a function of how much iron is there and how long it's there. So if you have a high iron level when you're 15 years of age, by the time you're 40 or 50, there's going to be many years of damage that occurs. There is not solid prospective data to support this, but in our opinion, the epidemiologic data is overwhelming. And so if you have uh, easy access to MRI measurements and you have the expertise to manage to use these chelators, um, it's our opinion uh, that the iron levels should be kept in less than 1.5 to 2. If you don't have the ability to accurately measure this, then it would be dangerous to attempt to do that without that expertise.